caused by the structure of the global system, but rather by any barbarian others out there, or maybe in here, who often inexplicably hate our freedoms and our way of life. Not only are they trying to bomb us, they are stealing our jobs, they are breeding like rabbits, they are trying to break into our country to defraud the public purse. Our civilization, we ourselves, are thus absorbed, that we don't have anything to blame. And as for putting it very simply, I'm not suggesting that you know, that's what everyone believes or something like that, but I'm trying to say that that's the kind of, that's the danger, what, that's the danger that happens, that you're not able to really be reflective about where, where we've gone wrong. And that creates that exclusionary tendency. So I would suggest that this tendency towards maximizing state power is closely linked to this tendency to otherize you know, as a religious and ethnic <coughs> minority in the homeland as well as foreigners on the frontiers. It's also clearly no coincidence that the focus on Muslim groups in particular is linked to the fact that Muslim majority regions happen to cut across some of the most strategic resource rich regions. It's not a coincidence, it's clear. There's a fundamental link, therefore, between these systemic crises, our inability to engage with their systemic causes, and the way political violence against outsider identities is being legitimized. And that clearly underscores the danger of a militarized approach to dealing with security. The defense planners are quite rightly watching for you know, the intensification of resource scarcity and things like that, global inequalities, blah, blah, blah. But they seem completely oblivious to the systemic causes of those crises. They don't seem to even understand that we should be looking at those systemic causes. Instead, they're just advocating the state expansionism as some kind of a solution. And all of this is rooted in the unquestionable assumption that governments must protect the current structure of a system which is supposedly in the peak of human evolution. The task then is simply to protect that system at any cost, be it in lives or treasure. And missing from that picture, of course, is the recognition that the continuation of business as usual could lead to a very different kind of end of history than the one Fukuyama was fantasizing about. Which brings me to the evidence about global crises. And I, I firmly believe that all the evidence shows that things like global warming, energy depletion, food scarcity, economic recession, not only are inherently interlinked, but they're mutually accelerated. And industrial, industrial civilization will not survive the 21st century in its current form. <coughs> whatever, whatever happens, I mean, like great things happen, but the industrial civilization in its current form will not exist um, after the 21st century. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to close on this. Um, I'm going to talk about crisis convergence. I'm going to talk specifically about these crises uh, so you can get an idea of the kind of analysis that I do now <coughs> and where we're likely to be going over the next 30 years. First of all, global warming, which I think by itself illustrates the gravity of our predicament, and I'm happy to answer questions about the science of it and all the rest of it uh, later on. Um, global average temperatures have already risen by 0.7 degrees Celsius in the last 30 years. In 2007, the UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, uh, a much maligned organization, told the world that the current rates of increase of fossil fuel emissions we were heading toward a rise in global average temperatures of around 6 degrees Celsius by the end of this century, leading to mass extinctions on a virtually uninhabitable planet. Now, when I, when I was doing the research for this book, I started um, about uh, five years ago, I I, I came at it with an open mind. I mean, I, I was actually really confused about all of these crises. I was confused about whether climate change is real. I was confused about whether peak oil was, was is, it, is it an oil industry conspiracy to control us, blah, blah, blah. I was confused about all of this stuff. I really didn't know. I mean, a, lot, a lot of people were even saying the recession, the bank collapse, engineered by the bankers to, to, to basically make loads of money. Um, so all that kind of stuff, when, you, and, and when, you, when you're looking at the narrative in the media, it just makes you feel more confused. There aren't, there aren't answers. You just get this sense of absolute confusion. Um, so that's actually why I wrote it, because I wanted to make sense of it, and I wanted to, to, to be able to make sense of it, communicate that sense 